Welcome to Five a Day with Jay. I am J.R. Murdoch. This episode might run a little long because I had somebody reach out to me today and say, you were listening to podcasts before they were called podcasts? Yes. Yes, I was. I had started blogging a very long time ago on really odd random sites that are probably still out there for all I know. I don't know. If they are, they are. If they're not, they're not. Uh, many of the blog sites had disappeared a long time ago. So early on in the blogosphere, people were blogging, doing a daily journal type of things, just posting random stuff. And it was fun to go surfing blogs to see what people were posting. I loved going to writing blogs and writing forums and learning more about writing. It was fun to do that. And then I stumbled up across something called an audio blog, which was the Dragon Page, cover to cover, with Michael Menenge. This was before Evo Terra came on board, and this was probably late 2003, early 2004. At the same time, they started up something called Winging It, which was a really fun program. But when it came to these audios, you had to either go to the web page and listen to it, because there were no feed aggregators at the time. You had to know, okay, every week at this time, I'm going to go to the web page and click on the link and get the new episode or manually download it so you can listen to it in your car on your whatever MP3 player you happen to have at the time. There was no way to just get it automatically. This was long before anything happened. And then Adam Curry had a show I don't remember what his show was called, but Adam Curry was an old MTV video DJ. Fine. He had his own thing going on, and he coined the term podcasting sometime in mid-2004. And in the audio blogging community, that coined term took off like wildfire. Everybody started calling what they were doing a podcast. During that time on the Dragon page... T. Morris and Mark Jeffries were both posting audio blogged books where they would post their chapters on the Dragon Page website. Scott Sigler, uh, both Mark Jeffries and T. Morris, those books were already published novels. Scott Sigler was the very first one to come out, I want to say, either very late 2004 or very early 2005. He started doing the podcast only version of Ancestor which was the very first podcast only novel people loved it Ancestor did I say Ancestor Earthcore my apologies so you had three books up on the Dragon Page website and this was very basic websites back in the day Evo Terra came along he joined Cover to Cover, and on Cover to Cover, they would interview authors and talk with authors. And one of the more popular ones they had on was Mike Stackpole, who in the later episodes after Evo and Michael had a split, Mike, Mike Stackpole and Mike Menenge continued the Dragon Page show. Mike Stackpole, I believe it might have been through him that I actually discovered Dragon Page, was because in his newsletter called The Secrets that you could subscribe to. I think it was like $20 a year, $25 a year. I believe he mentioned them, and I believe that's how I stumbled across the Dragon page. But they also had Winging It, which was one of their podcasts, and Winging It spun off so many other podcasters. One of the more famous ones who was still out there, Merle Lafferty. She had been doing her own audio blogging, which was, um, wow. It was essentially about being a geek mom at the time. At the time, early in podcasting, if you wanted to listen to every podcast that was available, you could. Back in the day, there were maybe a hundred or less podcasts total back in 04, 05. It really took a while to get steam. It really didn't just explode overnight. I want to say probably 2007 
is on the on the winging it page 2006 or 2007 that's when evo terra coined the term of it, you went from an audio blogged book to a podcast novel to a patio book evo terra was the one that coined that term and he's like hey i need to go trademark that i, I don't know if he ever did but he he was the one that started patiobooks.com which I don't believe exists anymore. I believe that name has been changed. I don't believe Evo Terra is associated with the website anymore. That's when things really started to take off and people started to go, hey, anybody with a microphone can sit down and record and produce a podcast. You don't need much equipment. Audacity is a free app that's been around for a very long time. If you have been involved in podcasting at all, you, you've heard all about Audacity. Obviously, there's lots of more expensive pay programs you can download to, to do podcasting. But very early on, it was a very small handful of people that were involved in, in podcasting. As I said, uh, Michael and Evo spun off Slice of Sci-Fi. Mer Lafferty came from Winging It. Jack Mangan's Deadpan podcast came from Michael and Evo's Winging It. Tony Mast. So many people came from the Winging It crew or the Slice of Sci-Fi crew. The Kick-Ass Mystic Ninjas. One of the things that started to cause me to pull away from the community was when they lost one of their members. And that was tough. That was a very tough time. That was about the time that Michael and Evo started to to drift apart, in my opinion, is when he passed away. I'm not not gonna say his name. It's don't go looking it up. It's it was a hard time, and it was a hard time for all of them. I do know that. Summer, I believe, is still involved with the Slice of Sci Fi crew. Again, I I have not been around that crew for a very long time, but back in the day. I was also involved with a lot of what was going on. If you ever listen to the old Dragon Page or Slice of Sci-Fi or Jack Mangan's Deadpan podcast or the Kick-Ass Mystic Ninjas with any regularity, odds are you heard my voice and you didn't realize it. I recently posted on Jack Mangan's Deadpan Facebook group some of the old audio clips that I found that I did for Jack back in the day. I did a lot of the, I did a lot of call-ins. I did a lot of promos and bumpers that they would call them. Um, I did slice of sci-fi ones. I did a roving reporter thing that ran for five or six episodes. I had a lot of fun just contributing. At the same time, I was also working on my own podcast novels my own patio books. I started doing V&A shipping, which has long since morphed into a series that's when I get publishing this year will happen. Will be a 15 book story arc across the V&A shipping universe. Uh, but in, I want to say it was Oh, Oh nine. When I finally did that, I finally had enough, courage to release my own book. I released VNA shipping. I released Billy Barbarian. People loved VNA shipping. I wrote the second book. I did not release it as a patio book because at the time life things happen. I didn't have the time to commit to actually recording it. I released it as an ebook and it failed. Billy Barbarian failed miserably. I released another book that I had written for my favorite daughter, Estelle failed miserably. I had a lot of rough success early on. Uh, like I said, people knew who I was. I had a very limited audience. At the time with patio books, it was very easy to think, I'm getting X number of downloads, therefore my audience must be that many people. I won't name names. There was a patio book author, and this is my belief. I have no hard facts on this. He took his download numbers per episode and took it across his entire run of his books that he produced. And he went to an, an 
agent and to a publishing company and said, look, look how many people I got downloading every single week, all my episodes. The problem with that is bots that surf the net, if you've got a popular book, will make it look like it's downloading when it's actually not downloading. v Shipping had thousands of downloads. I, I don't think thousands of people were listening to what I was saying. This individual had tens of thousands and they were they convinced a publisher that, hey, this is going to take off like wildfire. I got this gigantic fan base. In the early days of podcasting, fans were rabid for content. It was free. It was free content. Therefore, that fan base was very worked up. So what might be 100, 200, 300 very enthusiastic fans might seem like a gigantic fan base because those few people are making a lot of noise. He went to his publisher. I'm going to sell thousands of books. It was a trilogy that he had. They did the first book with the caveat. If it doesn't sell, that's it. He pushed hard really, really hard to get people to buy his book. At the time, I was not into physical books. I've got very few. You can see my bookshelf back there. Very few books on my shelf. I'm more into digital media. Let me drop that. I'm into digital media. I'm going to read. I'm going to listen. I'm probably not going to buy a physical book unless I really, really, really love that author. I liked him, thought he was a nice guy. I had no desire to pick up his book. Scott Sigler, on the other hand, T. Morris, I'm buying their stuff. This author pushed really hard to the point where he almost bankrupted himself because he spent so much time and money investing in getting people to buy his book. Unfortunately, as I mentioned at the time, even 09, 2010, the podcasting community was not that big. Even if every single person involved in the podcasting community had bought his book, it probably still would have failed. And it failed. Badly. And the publisher said, we want nothing more to do with you. It's sad. It was really, really sad that that happened. The backlash against the podcasting community from that one individual, I I get him being angry and upset. I, I, I get it. I've long since let that go, but at the time it was a big deal and he lashed out at the podcasting community, disappeared, boom, said I'm done with it. I'm never going to podcast again. The hell with all of you. I'm going to go do my own thing. I almost bankrupted bankrupted myself for you guys. It It was shocking. He was essentially blaming his fans for his book not succeeding. Again, the podcasting community wasn't that big. And he did, he did a bumper for me. I did a promo for him. I sent it out onto the airwaves on my podcast. It, it was too small of a community. And there was too much noise inside the community for it to ever succeed. Other people went in with reasonable expectations like Scott Ziegler. Scott Ziegler had expectations. Did his EarthCore book moved on to Ancestor, moved on to Nocturnal, moved on. He kept producing book after book after book. When he got picked up by a publisher, there were no expectations as far as this is going to take off like wildfire. Scott, when he produced his book, did a countrywide tour with his book. The other author did not do that, did not go and push. He had spent all his money and his time focusing on the community. Scott Segler took a book tour, went and met everybody, shook everybody's hand, signed their book, handed them their book. The other author was willing to do that, but to travel, to visit people, but he did not do an intentional book tour. Scott got another book deal, did the same thing. At the time, he, he was living out of San Francisco and not making much money as an author. He was working. His wife was working. But he would save up whatever little money he could and go and tour as many places as he could to go sign and meet people and talk to them directly. One author did it right, one author did it wrong. Again, 
not going to name the other author. If you know who it is, please do not comment on this post. I do not want to out this individual. Again, I'm entirely speculating on what happened based on what I saw happen, not what I know happened. I make I make some assumptions. I've talked to other people in the community who say my assumptions have merit. That's as far as it goes. Again, I've been involved in the community for a very long time. Yes, I've faded back. I've fallen back. I now do video podcasting in, instead. And I'm enjoying doing this video blogging. I'm enjoying this. This is something similar to podcasting for me. I like sitting down, turning on the microphone, and recording. I, I really do enjoy doing this. Even if at this point at the channel, this is much like when I was podcasting, I feel like I'm screaming into the ether. I'm making a lot of noise. I know I'm not getting heard. And what I like about YouTube better than when I was podcasting, when I would podcast, I would see download, 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 zero comments, zero comments, zero comments. At least with YouTube, I can see one view, two views, zero views. I get it. I understand what I'm doing. Honestly, I have said this many, many times for right now. This is all practice. I'm learning to talk in front of the camera. I'm getting more comfortable talking. And again, like I said, this one is a five a day with Jay, but there's a lot of stories I could tell about the early days of podcasting. If you'd love to hear them, I'd love to share them. I really would. It was a great time. It was so much fun. It was almost like a wild west. Everybody was doing everything and anything. Um, I'll, I'll share stories another time, but again, it was, it was a fun time. Podcasting has been such a blast and it was a great community when it was yay big. Obviously it splintered off. There's been other people that done, it, it wasn't our thing. Yes. Many of us were pioneers. Many of us did a lot. Many did more than others. I didn't, I did my part. Um, Confessions of a Struggling Writer was a lot of fun to do when I did it. All I'm saying is it was a very early time and not many people remember that time. A lot of people remember after it got big, after Patio Books was a big thing, after Nathan Lowell took off and just exploded like a solar flare. These are the things a lot of people recall from those days. Nathan Lowell actually happened years after everything got started. I want to say probably two years into body of books is when Nathan Lowell dropped his first book. Very quietly, didn't say a word. But that's a story for another time. So I probably should relabel these something other than Five a Day with Jay because obviously this one's going to run very long. Very brief history of the early days of podcasting. If you're interested in more content like this, by all means, comment below. In some cases, I will name names. In other names, I will not name names. I'm still friends with people that were involved, which is why I will not comment on who it was or what happened. Again, speculation. If I'm wrong, I would love for the individual to reach out and tell me what really did happen because I never got the opportunity to talk to him. Uh, when he left, he cut ties with everybody who was in the community, which was hard. It was hard when he did that. Um, and I'm glad he's still doing well. He's doing something completely similar, different. Um, he, it was been a five a day with Jay. I think that's enough for today. Uh, did not mean to go nearly as long as I did. At any rate, if you love podcasting, Go on to Facebook. Go find the podcasting group. It's a lot of fun. It really is. A lot of great people there. A lot of the old timers. A lot of newcomers. A lot of people just discovering their way. Hey, discover. That's what it's all about. It's about discovering yourself. It's about discovering other channels. It's about contributing. Would you like to see me start doing these video podcasts and convert them to audio only? So if you want to listen to them and you don't feel like watching them on YouTube... You can just download the episode and listen to it. I can always convert this video to an audio. 
and include the audio with the video. Let me know. I'd love to hear it. I really would. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. It's been five a day with Jay. As always, see you next time.